Okay, this one's gonna be a story about me. I'm a little bit lost, but life. I'm trip to nowhere. I'm supposed to be in Brisbane with Sue. I'm spending the rest of my life and probably getting married about me. Never thought I'd be here. Two and a half thousand Ks. Cairns, far north Queensland. Five years of trying to work out where I am and what's going on, what's eventuated, what's happened. And there's no sense to it. I've never worked it out. At the moment, all I seem to do is hold on and go for the ride. second he must have seen what had happened or something because he pulled up straight away but he pulled up and he jumped straight off his luge and let it roll down straight down the hill he didn't even care and he jumped over the guardrail just before i did and i remember him just screaming and you could just tell from the look in his eyes something was was bad it was not right and he's just screaming get an ambulance get an ambulance and I still thought she just found herself. And by the time I jumped over the fence, it was just blood everywhere. Who's Brad? I come from a small town um, south of Newcastle, a small town called Belmont. It was in a nice spot between a lake and an ocean. Had everything as a kid all the sports you'd ever want to do, surfing, skateboard riding. Wasn't ever into team sports as a kid. Seemed to veer away from anything to do with other players in teams. I was always solitary. Where all the other kids played football, and soccer and that, I seemed to stick to skateboard riding, surfing, roller skating, and always tried to be the best at it. It was a good environment. A lot of the people around my area, professional sportsmen, so I got to interact with people, like-minded people, and push the limits. Surfing, skateboard riding, motocross riding, pretty much everything I got to do down there. It was just a really nice place to grow up. It was easy. The lake was fun. The surf was fun. I still stay in contact with everybody I know from down that way. Bradley and I were born 11 and a half months apart, which means we're the same age for seven days each year, which makes it very competitive when you got someone the same age as you in the same house. Uh, we started off riding motorbikes mainly because Dad was a motorbike mechanic, so we had both best of both worlds. We were allowed to fish and surf during the week and then motorbike ride on the weekends. In similar ways, we were very competitive in other ways we weren't a lot of things that I did individually Carl didn't do but then there was a lot we also did together and pushed ourselves the motorbike riding fishing things like that were always very relevant in our family it was just something we've always done always done from little kids we can go up the creek and just explore see what sort of mischief we can get in and see what we can catch them we could find out there it was always good. Every time Brad got something, 
for Christmas or for birthdays, I wanted the same thing. So every year I was one year younger and had the same toy as Brad did. So it always made us very, very competitive. He'd do a better trick than me, I'd do a better trick than him. He'd skate harder than me, I'd skate harder than him. He'd catch a bigger fish than me, then I'd catch a bigger fish than him. And it's just been like this our whole lives. Not to see who wins, but just to push each other further, push ourselves further and become become on top. We've always been a little team, and it's good when you've got a team member who is part of your family and just makes things so much easier. Protective, protective. Wanted to show him what to do and how to do it properly. He, um, yeah, he was he was really protective with Carl and has been all his life, up until now. He is still protective of Carl. They both love their sport. They BMX raced, roller hockey. They won the Tamworth City Games. In roller hockey, Brad and Carl did. We'd go to the beach nearly every afternoon. They'd surf. They'd go to Granny's pool, which was a little pool that really suited them better, but they always wanted to go to the surf. Bradley, when he was younger, we were there one day and he dived under a wave. we just got there, walked down the beach, dived under a wave and come up with stinging nettle, oh, jelly bubble all over him, the stinging one, the blue one. Oh, it was so bad, I had to take him to the hospital. Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot they could do. They gave him antihistamines, but it really scared him. And he never, sort of that season, was really wary of going into the water again. That's where Granny's Pool came in. There were no jelly blubbers in Granny's Pool. I've lived on the farm for about five years. I moved up here just after the accident, about a year after the accident. Time frames have been very blurry since the accident. The time doesn't seem to matter. It's very irrelevant. You just wake up and it's just another day and the next day continues on. I get up and do my daily chores around the house. I get to uh, drive the tractor around and cut grass to prepare myself in for the weekend. Weekend's all about the motorbike riders letting people come in and enjoy themselves. It's something that I like to do, because I naturally like to enjoy myself. So I have an environment that I'm allowed to manipulate and use the way I want to see it, the way I see fit. This is where I live. It's um, 88 acres far north Queensland, uh, Mirawini, or at the base of Bartlefree Mountain. Um, beautiful spot. My friend Dave's let me stay here on his property. He's lived here for 15 years and owned the property. Um, he's given me a chance to come up here and stay for free. It's just good to have friends around, family environment, be in nature. Not have to be a, under a stressful environment all the time, which is what you know, it's hard to deal with. So. Yeah, me and Dave met years and years ago and after the accident happened, Dave gave me a chance to come up here and move up here and live up with him. And of course, after seeing the place, I couldn't say no and end up getting stuck here. And this is it, the mountain. You can probably hear in the background the heap motorbike riders. This place is um, set up for a motorcycle facility. It's Cairns Recreational Off-Road Club. And basically, I'm the caretaker at the moment. So I just live here, help Dave out, maintain the property as much as we can and let the motorbike riders come in and use the facility. And place for family and 
just people who enjoy themselves. Today's parents have put a recreational license on the property, which allows us to have different events, motorcycle riding, sports facilities and things like that. I'm very privileged to have that license, there's not many of them in Queensland. We can have music events, basically any event where we have a um, huge gathering. Um, there's long, around about 100 lychee trees from memory. Um, some in disrepair, some in different states of working order. They need a lot of work. Yeah, Reese turned up, he loved it. He thought it was good and friggin' that bottom section around the corner, he's getting the big open lines around there. Instead yeah. of turning one when it was all wet, he was just turning it all in one. Yeah. And he was really quick. Yeah. He's just getting away from me everywhere. It has to go. Oh, if we trim all them trees back, we could see the whole vista of the valley. It'd be absolutely beautiful. Knock those corners down and knock all those trees back and we could see all the valley. And that's the um, Bruce Highway, we can see all those cars going through, little township in Mirrawinnie, all the squares off in the valley, all the cane fields, it always changes, the scenery always changes, someone's got a big cane fire going, that could be in the Yuvenangi Swamp, that's the Yuvenangi Swamp out there Dan, all those dead trees you can see. Some of the biggest crocodiles you will ever see in your life are out in the energy swamps. I met Brad Sterrett at Level 2 Skate Park in 1993. It was a place that I'd heard about before I left Adelaide and moved to Sydney. When I found the place, I fell in love with the place, and Brad was a big part of that. We became fast friends. We both rocked long hair at the time. We were both playing the guitar and into heavy metal, and it wasn't long before we started spending a lot of time together and exploring new skate spots. We often shut the skate park and have our own session till late at night filming our latest trip. I became very close to his mum Marie and his brother Carl and they treated me like one of their own. Uh, Brad and I had always skated as kids. Um, one of our first skate pictures is of us crouching in front of Grandma's little silver Mazda uh, 626 I think it was. Crouching down on the plastic boards. We get one of the double kick skateboards and we came across a surf shop that had a skate park upstairs. So we go for a walk into the skate park and we're not skating around, we're just standing there watching the guys. Some of the blokes were ripping. The bloke behind the counter said to us, mate, what are you old fellas doing here? You know, you are a bit old to be skating. Mate, you're never too old to be skating. You're never too old to do one of the things you've done when you're a kid. Because they're the things that are grained into your memory. You push bike ride and your skateboard ride. And so the old bloke said to us, these fellas want a job? Job in a skate park? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm a carpenter by trade, so my job happened to be building the skate ramps. Brad's job was looking after the kids and running the skate park. The amount of times we've had to take kids to hospital with broken bones is incredible. But it was the biggest skate park in the Southern Hemisphere at the time. The first place wasn't real big, when we got to the second place, it got a bit bigger and had all the pros turn up. Actually had Tony Hawk come over to me after one of the skate comps and say, mate, they are two of the best quarter pipes I've ever ridden. This is probably my little sanctuary. 
It's where I like to come in the afternoon and relax and get away from everybody. Um, my collection, boards I ride, boards I like to restore, do up. Just a little bit of everything here. It's basically a 35 years of my life in one room. There's a lot of the boards here that you see, I've designed, helped develop for different companies. I've been very quiet in the industry, as they'd say. I don't like to step up and I'm not a well-known person. But in the background, I do a lot of work. Getting things right, testing things for companies. It's just something I've done for a long time, a lot of years. Here's a new one I've just developed. I haven't even ridden this board yet. It's for breakboard.com. And it's their new trucks with the disc brake set up. Not many people have actually seen these. And they're a, a quite a unique design. This is my race board. It's got a lot of profile and foot stops. I pretty much ride it everywhere. Downhill, and cruising around the streets. This is my street luge. This one's probably my pride and joy. And the one that I ride the most, and it's definitely the fastest board that I've ever been on. It's custom made. All the components were bent up by VAG Street Luges in Brisbane. The fastest I've ever been on this street luge, I've recorded a speed of 135 kilometres an hour on a secret hill in Newcastle. I'm not going to disclose, but. I believe I've been a little bit faster without a GPS reading. I think around about in the 140 kilometre hour range. It's of course FSU, skateboards, Newcastle Skate Shop, they've always been on board and 25 years of support and I can't thank them enough for everything they've ever done for me. It's just been incredible to have that 25 years of support in one sport, basically just to help you get to places and help you with gear and things in hard times, be there to help pick you up and support you. So I always thank all the sponsors. Stedham Shoes, Steve's a great friend in America. Frankie Hill, Frankie Hill Skateboards. We've also helped Frankie with Exide as well. We have good collaborations. It's all about making good friends. The sun is rising up above. It's a little bit tidying up, making the place look presentable. Yeah, just a little project I'm working on. 250cc. I don't own it. It's just something I'm working on for a bloke. Yeah, this is my tool shed, my workshop. You know, bush workshop, live out in the bush, you need a generator. Uh, just loading the Suzuki up to go do a, um, a welding job today. Yeah, I was going to rebuild this one, but a uh, bloody tree fell on it. <laughs> I think it's a bit beyond it now. Um, the old local Aborigines used to mark the, um, the path from Dean's Creek straight out to Old Bar and the other pearl scar on the tree, this one, pointed directly towards Tononi. When they did the road widening down here, I managed to get this delivered here so we could try and preserve it. Every time they walked past, they used to hit it with a stick. Slam, slam, each side. Make that scar grow even, even harder and harder. Yeah, scar tree. This is each rub and I just whacked together. A bit of clay, sand, straw, a few bricks. Yeah, uh, cook some mean pizza. Do, uh, 200 degrees makes it in there. Backs onto the bar. Makes a pretty tight little arrangement. Yeah, I met Brad originally through Street Luge. He was a competitor. I was a competitor. Um, the location was actually Bulladilla Mountain, not far south from here. And uh, we were gathered there, like there was um, blokes from Melbourne, blokes from Sydney, who was a Newcastle boy at that stage. I came down from Brisbane uh, with another uh, uh, small crew from Brisbane. We were all accumulating on um, Bulladilla Mountain for a, just an early morning race ride, not a, not a race. 
and I get together, get to know a few of the common street losers around around Australia. And um, Ralph Magazine was there doing an interview for that um, for the for that occasion. And um, sort of since then, Brad and I have just had a, a a friendship, you know, just a relationship where we're pretty tight, um, but don't talk to each other that often. Anytime we do, click straight back into it. One of those. Yeah, one, one of those. One of those situations you can talk to someone like. Yep. Anytime he needs to talk to me, he knows he can call me anytime. Same, same goes. Yeah, it must be four years since I've seen, five years nearly since I've seen Brad, I think. He came up to North Queensland and we had to leave because I had a friend back here in the hometown. Um, he was dying of pancreatic cancer, so it was a mad rush to get back from North Queensland down to here. Yeah, he, we left him up there and we tripped around. Yeah, you missed the guy. Don't get to talk to him that often. Um, I think I might be a bit of a bad memory for him with um, the time that we got really close and the reason that we got really close. Um, pretty tragic circumstances, which I'll go into later. Meeting Sue was, a friend had made a phone call and said that there was some friends of theirs coming down to an event in Sydney that I was going to. I might like to meet them and I could possibly teach them a thing or two on the street luge because they were new to the sport. I had not met Sue and her friend before. Um, they came down to the Blue Mountains event, it was, which is a relatively small hill, 60 kilometres an hour. So it was a good day. I got to enjoy myself and mingle with the people and talk to people. Well, Sue was one of them people who really wanted to talk to me and get to know and learn how to ride the street luge fast so it was an easy to she was an easy person to talk to she was a good listener and a very fast learner so everything i explained to her she took in and utilized straight away so i could see the natural progression of her getting on the board to when she became race ready and she was able to race and ride with other riders proficiently and well it was good to see um that was our first introduction. And then after that, there was a lot of, because she was traveling, traveling a lot, she'd come past Newcastle and I'd get to see her for a day. I'd get to take her to the train station or something like that, just purely as friends, of course, and her as a respect for me as another street luge rider. And over a period of six months and slowly talking, we ended up um, striping up, a stronger friendship. The consequences of your actions, how things start out so simply and easily and end so badly. The smile on his face was was worth anything. He was so in love with Sue. Um, it affected me very, very, very hard. And never recovered. He lost his life, essentially skating. So I'm going to have to stop the interview for a sec. Sometimes situations are out of your control. 